Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, of course, when you are from uh, New Zealand. We're back here again for the final stage, the final showdown of this uh, SEG E-Racing Under-23 stage race. Uh, yeah, it's been very exciting so far, uh, Yuri. You're back with me again. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Also, a uh, warm welcome to you, Casper. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the final stage already, it, uh, it has been a wrap. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to all the action today. Uh, we're riding the more from two stage. Maybe you can tell uh, something more about it uh, in just a second. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to see uh, uh, the best uh, climbers of this field attacking uh, this mythical climb. Yeah, yeah, this is of course a mythical climb, just as you're saying, uh, Yuri. It's the climb from Mola Center. However you want to call it, it's uh, not the Bédouin side, but it is, of course, a very, very hard side there up to the top. So it's around 24.3 kilometers. I can see it now at the right uh, top of the screen. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yesterday we had a, a very hard hilly stage as well that made up a, a big general classification. Now only six riders within a minute from each other. But we do have uh, four riders within six seconds. One of those riders who is uh, very, very uh, up there in the classification, who uh, has a chance to win today as well, is uh, Tymon Adesman. Hello, now Tymon. Let's hope he starts talking. <laughs> now we hope that he will uh, talk again. I forgot to put the camera up. There we go. Yeah. Hello, Tymon. Hello. So, uh, how are you doing today? Did you sleep well? Are your legs well for this uh, final stage? Yeah, I uh, slept pretty well. So I think I'm ready to uh, go all out on the Mont Ventoux. Yeah, how did yesterday go for you, actually? Um, I think I did pretty well. It wasn't really a parkour that suited me. Like such short efforts on the, on the climbs. But I think I did pretty well. Uh, did a high cadence on the climbs. And uh, took my recovery on the on the descent, so I think I uh, did a pretty good race yesterday. It was a shame that we uh, didn't took the sprint, but yeah, today is a different day, and uh, we will give it our all. Yeah, we're looking at the final kilometer now. At the moment, Paul Wright was really strong there. Eh? What's your plan to beat him today? Um, yeah, well, as I uh, told you, it's uh, yeah, it's a different parkour. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a way longer uh, effort, so maybe he's uh, he's a bit less on the longer efforts, and we uh, uh, we can get him on that. Like the Father Bear, Father Bear is really short, so yeah, I I hope he's a bit less on the on the on the longer climbs. So we hope to beat him uh, in that way. Is there a possibility for? Oh, sorry, uh, Yuri, go on. <laughs> were you were you surprised that Paul did such a massive uh, effort yesterday? Yeah, to be honest, I don't really know Paul, but he seemed like a really uh, strong guy with a really good punch, and uh, he showed that on the Vaterberg, and uh, uh, I don't really have that punch, so it's no surprise that I didn't uh, won yesterday, but yeah, he, he seems like a really strong guy, and he played it really smart to uh, accelerate on the uh, on the start of the Vaterberg, and uh, he caught us by surprise, so that's was really uh, strong and really tactical. Yeah, and, and what about today, uh, Timon? Um, yeah, you said uh, I'm going to uh, to uh, leave it all there on uh, on the Mont Ventoux. Have you ever ridden the real Mont Ventoux? No, to be honest, not. I never did the Mont Ventoux, so the first time Mont Ventoux will be uh, virtual. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, Castor, you. Yeah, we have one more question. I don't know if you have time for it, but uh, you have two teammates with you there at six seconds from uh, Paul Wright. Uh, is it helpful for today and do you think they can beat Paul Wright as well or maybe they can instead of you? Yeah, maybe in the beginning it's a bit flatter, but, uh, not so much uphill, but I think in the end on the, on the Mont Ventoux it's just one man for uh, just free for all. Yeah. It's just uh, going all out, every man for himself and uh, just going all out. I don't think uh, a team really plays that big. Uh, that big of an impact on the move to itself but in the uh, in the beginning maybe yeah probably uh, we have a really strong team yeah yeah i understand good luck today and uh, hope to see you soon uh, for a post-race interview maybe eh, where you won 
Ja, so, thank you. <laughs> so that Good was uh, Tywin Adersman, who will be a trainee as well for uh, Sunweb. I don't know how they are going to do that with, uh, with the current crisis, but uh, we're currently watching Mason Holliman. I don't know what uh, happened to his camera, but uh, he is somewhere uh. up there. Hello, Mason. Hello. So it's a big battle actually eh, between the SCG E Racing Academy and the Holdsworth Zeppi. You guys are first and fifth in the classification at the moment. What do you think about your chances for today, and especially from your teammate as well? Yes, I think uh, the chat is going to be a close race for sure. Um, you know, the, the three side guys have showed they're all super strong, and obviously Paul showed how good his legs were yesterday. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess we just let the road decide. Yeah, and, and, uh, Paul, uh, Mason, can you probably, because Diamond just told us he didn't know Paul that well, can you introduce Paul to, to us and to the other uh, spectators who are watching today? Uh, yeah, P Paul is, um, is from New Zealand. He's, uh, I think he's 21. Um, and yeah, he's, uh, he, he's been riding for the team for the last two years. Um, yeah, not, not much else um but but can, does he stand a chance uh, today uh mason do you think so uh yes i think so i think um paul's a rider who can change you know what if he's on a good day he's good at everything um i think he's at yeah and and how do you fancy your own chances today mason because uh you have experience in winning this one right yes yeah um well, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it for sure. I guess hopefully the legs feel like last time. Um, I think I know how to ride it quite well, so I guess it just depends how everyone else is going as well. All right. L last question for me, then I give it back to Casper uh, Mason. Um, if you have to name a, the big favorite for today, uh, who would it be for you? Um, I would have to say Harrison. Um, yeah, I think he shown he was good in all terrains, and I think he uh, he knows how to race these uh, e races super well. All right, we will uh, we will write that down. Casper, right. up to you. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Mason, and good luck on the race. Eh? Thank you. So my uh, Zoom is actually having a, a little problems. It's not uh, reacting properly, uh, so I cannot introduce you the riders yet. But uh, Yuri. Yeah, it's actually a, a battle between two teams eh? today. We've got Holdsworth Zeppi there in first and fifth position in the GC. And then we have three guys from uh, SCG in between, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And um, I'm very looking forward if, if the battle will be between these uh, five guys or that there maybe perhaps be another rider who, uh, who, can, uh, who can battle with them um, for the stage win, of course, and then maybe who knows for the GC. Um, but yeah, it, it probably will be a fight between those two, uh, two <coughs> those two teams, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to to see uh, which of the of the two is the better one. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Are there any other uh, favorites for today's stage win? Maybe someone we didn't see in the first two uh, races, so maybe not particularly for GC, but especially the stage win. Are there any guys who can uh, compete against that five? Uh, well, I'm really looking forward what. Um, uh, Corbin Strong can do on the, uh, on this uh, on this uh, Mont Ventoux. Uh, really strong rider, of course. He's a track rider, but uh, if you see his results from from last year and also the beginning of this year, uh, it seems to me like he's a really all-round guy. So uh, perhaps he he can also battle uh, with those five guys. Of course, he's also an SCG rider, um, and also uh, looking forward to uh, to some other riders who can do very well here. Um, for example, Andrew Bitwell of the team Skoda Fruzio is also a quite a good climber, still a young guy. Um, did very well in the New Zealand Cycling Classic uh, back in January or February, don't know for sure. Um, but I expect him also, but he did make the start yesterday, just like Ruben Thompson, who was the last one I would uh, wanted to name. Um, but uh, both of them missed the start yesterday, so I hope uh, they uh, will uh, compete today. They won't be there up for the GC, but maybe they can battle with those other guys for the stage win. Yes, as we are watching, uh, Paul Wright at the bottom right of your screen. Right, right, right. Paul Wright, it's currently uh, 6 a.m. in the morning in the New Zealand, or maybe an hour later or, or not. It depends on the time zone. But he is wearing the purple jersey 
for that uh, Zeppi Holdsworth team. We already saw Timon Adesman. He is in third position there in the general classification. Together with uh, Marco Frigo, who is also on the Zoom call. There he is, uh, warming himself up there with, uh, with a few... Uh, yeah, there he is. So then we have uh, Harrison Wood as well, the big favorite. If uh, Mason Holyman has to say it, he is uh, warming himself up. Also there at the six seconds from Paul Wright... And then uh, the last rider I have to show you is uh, Mason Holliman. We already spoke with him before the race. He is a little more behind, 16 seconds. But on uh, this big climb such as the Mont Ventoux, I don't think that would be too much of a problem. If uh, Mason Holliman has good legs today, he can also compete for victory. We're going to find it out in a little more than 20 seconds. Yeah, really looking forward to the stage. And hopefully it will be a good one. But I think it will. Yeah, of course it will uh, uh, Yuri, only 10 seconds left and then the very last stage of this uh, SCG e-racing series, the under 23 series will start here on RGT 4, 3, 2, 1 and we're off already there the last stage has started and uh, now I'm asking you Yuri, has everyone uh, gone there for a good start or are there a few people at the start still? I'm just skimming through the field and it looks like everyone's taken the start uh, yeah, it is only uh, 170. That's Rutger van Stokstraten uh, missed his start a little bit. He's uh, behind, and also Ruben Thompson, who we were just talking about uh, before the race, uh, is also uh, slightly uh, distant by the by the pack. But I think he's uh, he's coming back in the wheel of David Decker, and also Stan van Tricht is in the uh, back part of the peloton. But Ruben Thompson is uh, coming back right now. Okay, thanks a lot. We can see the leader of the classification in his purple leader jersey already on the move there. It's uh, Paul Wright who's gone for an attack. I don't know if it uh, was meant to be, but uh, he's already there up at front. Now he's being uh, reeled in by the peloton and he needs to watch out that he's not getting dropped. Eventually he is there together with his uh, teammate Mason Holliman. Mason Holliman, we're seeing him now at the right bottom of your screen. 23.5 kilometers to go. We're not climbing immediately. It's around 10 kilometers before the real climb is uh, starting. So maybe a little chance there for a few teams to do some team tactics. And for the ones who are not uh, a really good climber, it's of course a big chance to uh, gain some time on the concurrential. Maybe if uh, someone doesn't go for the GEC, he can already attack and uh, they will maybe let him go. What do you think about that, uh, Yuri? Yeah, that could be very well uh, the case. I'm uh, actually in the last group now, where uh, three riders are uh, yeah, left behind by the, by the bunch. That are Stan van Tricht from SEG Cycling, uh, Ruben Thompson and also... Um, uh, oh, Ruben Thompson did leave the whole game, I think. Yeah, he did. And also up there is uh, a guy named Will, and I'm now searching for his name. Will Roberts is that from the Will's ah, uh, right. Racing Academy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, completely right. So um, yeah, two uh, riders uh, left behind by the bunch, and all the other riders are uh, up in the front group. So um, yeah, very curious to see when the first attacks will uh, will uh, come up. Yeah, I have to say to you that uh, this uh, first part before we reach the, the real climb is actually a really technical part with a lot of turns and normally that's of course not really a big problem but now it actually is because uh, you have the possibility to save your legs there in the turns and if you do it correctly uh, you can seriously uh, gain some uh, more energy than the rest of the pack so maybe that's a chance as well to, uh, to win it because of the tactics as we saw the uh, SEG borders there Nice to see we are passing a little village here in France. Oh, do you get the Tour de France feelings with this uh, a little bit, Yuri, maybe? or? Nah, no, not really. I miss all the flowers and stuff but uh, and all the nice scenery. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty nice that there is uh, there is something of um, of racing today. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy there uh, that we can watch some uh, some race. So. Yeah, as we are taking uh, the right corner here in that little village, the Mont Ventoux is uh, 21.4 kilometers away. Yeah, maybe if you see the tower of the Mont Ventoux or someone starts running behind his bike, then uh, you will get the real Tour de France feeling. Is that enough, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that's enough, especially the running part. <laughs> okay, okay, so maybe we can ask a few riders uh, after the race. We'll see 
Tymon Adesman, uh, here we can see him. I think he's also in the peloton, I'm not sure, but uh, not many yeah. riders are dropped at the moment. So we can uh, say that Axel van der Tuuk leading the pack there together with Michael Seilaert. They are 11th and uh, 12th in the GC already, almost four minutes behind. So this is uh, purely for the stage win or maybe to help out uh, their teammates, especially in the case of uh, Michael Seilaert, since Axel van der Tuuk is the only one from the Jumbo Visma development team uh, who's riding here. They're taking a little advantage on the peloton. It's around 30 meters, but it could be enough to maybe set up a breakaway here. Would be cool. Owain uh, Roberts trying to follow them. Owain is riding at the uh, Wales Racing Academy there. Nick McKibbin, who we saw in the first stage as well, attacking a lot. Yesterday we didn't see a lot of him, but he was uh, still around 16th place there. So uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing quite a good job as well there at the front of the peloton as we are, uh, yeah... A little uphill section, eh, where it's four percent. It's not a lot, yeah. of course, but uh, it could be uh, it could be painful. Yeah, sure. Especially uh, for riders who uh, who don't really like to climb. It's uh, yeah, it it could be a pity to to get up here. But uh, yeah, really uh, really nice to see a breakaway because we didn't saw that yesterday. Uh, of course, there was. Uh, after just one pathway climb, there was immediately a front group of 11 riders, but that were the strongest guys in the in the race. Uh, but uh, with all due respect for uh, Michael Zeilat, who is in the lead now, I don't think he is going to win today. Yeah, I don't think the same, but uh, it's of course nice to show yourself there through the whole world. 121 people are watching the stream at the moment, and they are all watching uh, Michael Zeilat, who is up front there together with uh, Axel van der Tuuk. Yeah, let me know where you're from and let me know who you think is going to win uh, this uh, stage. And of course the GC as well. I would love to hear it from you. As I can see a few people in the comment section already. Nice that you're here. Owain uh, Roberts is trying to get away from the peloton. I don't think it's uh, it's it's uh, intention to do so. But Nick McKibben is trying to bridge up to that uh, front group. So it's actually nice to see that we indeed have a breakaway. And Michael Seilard is from the SCG E-Racing Academy. So I'm already thinking about maybe... Maybe a big team tactic from them that would be really cool eh? yeah that would be really cool but on the other hand like timon said um you can't have that much advantage if a teammate is up in front of you because uh yeah of course you can draft behind him but then you really have to uh, to keep in contact with each other to um uh, yeah to make sure you don't go faster than the other guy but uh, i see that the the pack is already back uh, on their wheels uh, on this uh, steeper part of the climb yeah, their attack is over, as you say, uh, Yuri Michael Seilard still up front with a few meters before the peloton. Dennis Grasfold is in uh, second position at the moment, and he's reeling the rider from SCG E-Racing Academy back in. It's really hard to get out of the draft and go on it alone. You really need a group or so to... Uh, to do so as we can see Lars Boven there in the comment section he thinks that Axel van der Tuuk is going to win that's uh, real love by a teammate so go on Axel there Lars is watching you we can see uh, a few more riders Kids Gaming is cheering on Michael Seilaert but uh, it's not his day and eh? he's uh, being reeled in by the peloton and now he needs to fight hard to uh, catch the peloton back but I don't think he will so that's it all over for Michael Seilaert today as there are 31 riders still in that uh, front group we can see Milan Paulus behind David Decker. Yeah, if you're not a climber today, then it's really hard to uh, to make it eh, today. Yeah, and uh, Holsworth Sappy is uh, getting rid of all the sack racing riders at the moment because only Harrison Wood and uh, Marco Frigo and Timon Arensman are up there. Uh, and sorry, I do forget still too. Wessel Krull is up here too, and I think Dan Hole is also here. Yeah. And Jordi Meus uh, currently attacking. So uh, there's still a lot of uh, riders and uh, Mikkel Michuka is uh, uh, in second place now with uh, Nick McKibbing chasing for Holsworth Zappi. Yeah, as you say, Mikkel Mujica, he was, uh, he was waving at us and then he got dropped in the first stage. So he lost a around a quarter there and I didn't see him in the, in the results yesterday, but he is here. A fresh start for him as well. He has the possibility to win the stage and he's trying to go for it, but he's being reeled in by the peloton as Jordi Meus is the only leader at the moment. You're watching Paul Wright in the purple leader's jersey there at the bottom right of your screen. Yeah, Paul Wright yesterday, he did an insane effort riding almost at 10 watt per kilogram the whole Paterberg there the last time. Uh, it was more than, uh, of an explosive effort, eh? Do you think, uh, Paul, yeah, we, we don't know him for sure as well, but do you think today on the Mova 2, it's, it's something different, eh, that effort? 
Yeah, it is. It is like Timon said uh, in the pre-race interview. It's uh, um, the long effort because yesterday on the path of Burgers were real that uh, and the real punchy attacks who could do the trick. But now you have to, uh, um, yeah, uh, put in a, a lot of watts for a very long time if you want to be uh, up there uh, with the best riders in this stage. So uh, yeah. It's a, it's a big difference because you have to climb a lot longer today. And um, yeah, for the guys who uh, who do well in the classic races, uh, it's uh, most of the time it's difficult to do uh, the same trick in the mountains. And I don't think it would be uh, uh, different in this virtual uh, racing. Yeah, completely true. Paul Wright, is a, it's his last year actually as an under 23 rider. So when there ever comes a new uh, series of hits, uh, Paul Wright won't be up there. He is uh, born at the 21st of uh, February 1998. He was 10th last year at the road race of the national championships from uh, New Zealand. So a little fact there about uh, Paul Wright, but indeed I didn't know him before as well. So uh, it's good that we also get to know new talents uh, up there. Paul Wright currently in uh, the top 10 there. He is uh, really alert there as we are uh, hitting 8% now. The slope is really going up and up and up. And I don't really think that we have started the real climb yet. It's, uh, it's a big, uh, yeah, how do you say that? Before the foot of the climb, it's also uh, a big uh, challenge to get there. So uh, not everyone in the peloton at the moment, only around 30 riders, as we saw uh, like uh, uh, a few minutes ago. Sindre Koolset also there at the front. Sindre Koolset is sixth in the general classification, only 51 seconds behind. He managed to get second place yesterday, eh? but uh, in that first stage, he lost 47 seconds. So that's a pity for him. Yeah, that is because... Uh, uh or else he would have been uh, up here too um, and he did also well in the, in the exhibition uh, round of this uh, race where he was if i'm not mistaken he was third so maybe he could also be up there with the uh, with the five guys who will uh, we are watching uh, and he's of course in sixth place so maybe he can surprise us and uh, yeah and uh, take maybe the victory here yeah julius johansson being dropped. I saw a few riders there. Jordi Mills also being dropped. He is uh, seventh in the GC. I don't know if a top 10 is a big honor in this kind of races, but uh, Jordi is clearly not going for it at the moment as he's already 200 meters behind the leader of the race. We can see uh, Veti Vainio, our youngest competitor there, also being dropped together with uh, Tom Smeets, Philip Heine, a few of individual riders from the Netherlands there. Axel van der Tuck, currently in 24th position, also dropped. Tristan Jusome, Sean Flynn, Owen Roberts. Only 20 people left in the peloton and a few are having really hard times to keep up. Mikael Musica in last position. He really needs to push himself to stay up there. And uh, yeah, we haven't even uh, raced 12 minutes. It's unbelievable how many riders are uh, having trouble there. Johannes Banzer, 15th in the GC, is also going to get dropped in a few seconds if he is not uh, putting up his uh, power at the moment. So uh, yeah, it's a really, really hard race already. The pace is really high at the front and that makes it also hard to break away, of course. Eh? Yeah, it is. And it's a very good job of Wessel Krull, who is uh, currently in the, in the front position, who uh, for now, I think for, for over two minutes, is pushing 9.1 watts uh, per kilogram. So that's a really, uh, really hard pace uh, uh, being ridden by him. And um, yeah, a lot of riders are, um, are having difficulties with the with the pace of Vessel Krull and are uh, yeah are being left behind. Yeah, you're saying that uh, correctly. As we are watching, uh, let's see, Harrison Wood there. What do you think about Harrison Wood actually? Because I, it's my favorite for today actually because uh, he is uh, he doesn't weigh too much, which is of course very important when you are a climber. We know that he's a really really good e racer as well, but he's not really uh, surprised me in a positive way in the last two stages. Maybe he was uh, saving his energy all for today. Uh, yeah, it could very well be the case. Uh, Harrison, of course, is uh, is a guy who does uh, a lot of these virtual races and it, and indeed is very good at it. Um, he was also second in the in its wheel game uh, a couple of weeks ago from the Dutch newspaper, where also a lot of pros uh, were uh, giving acte de présence, like Case Ball, who said that yesterday. Um, so uh, yeah, he's he's sure one of the favorites because he knows the trick in this uh, this kind of virtual racing and of course he is said to be a, a very good climber uh, he still has to prove that in the under 23 level um, but i think um, yeah winning today could uh, yeah 
could be one of the reasons to uh, to watch him in the in the following road season. Yeah, only 19 years old, uh, Harrison Wood, a huge talent there from Great Britain, from the uh, SEG E Racing Academy. As uh, Wessel Krul is still keeping the pace high, he's doing an, uh, an amazing job actually to drop as many riders as possible. Do you think it's a tactic to keep the pace high and maybe or in that way uh, make sure that uh, Paul Wright is going to be exhausted before the fin finale really starts? Yeah, that could be very well uh, the tactic because uh, um, SEG has another rider who can do this for a very long time. Um, I think when Vessel Krill's job is done, Dan Hola will take uh, his position and, uh, and also uh, uh, will be motoring at the at the front of the of the front group. Um, and then uh, afterwards, it will be up to the three guys who are uh, uh, on the top of the GC with Harrison Wood, Timon Aresman, and Marco Frigo. And I think. After Dan Hole and Marco Friegel will get the job to uh, maintain the high pace. Yeah, Peter Kibble being dropped. A lot of riders being dropped. I'm trying to uh, keep an eye on the top 10 as well. I don't know if Stan van Tricht is still in the first group, but he was being dropped really early on in the race. Eh? Yeah, and he so, hasn't uh, uh, returned, so he's, so, uh, he's way back. So Jordi Meus and Stan van Tricht already being dropped out of that top 10 at the moment, which gives the possibility to a lot of riders to get in there. It's still a long way to go, of course, but also riders like Axel van der Tuuk are dropped. Michael Seilaert, who were 11th at 12th in the classification. So uh, yeah, they're not making their way into the top 10. A lot of possibilities, of course, uh, for the riders who are still in that group. So keep on going, keep on fighting, even though you are almost 10 minutes behind. It doesn't matter because the riders who are dropped at the moment have a really long time ago and uh, may be uh, putting the Alt F4 button of this program once they are really done with the race because uh, it's oh so hard, eh? especially after two races already uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday or the day in front of yesterday. I don't know exactly how you say that. But uh, yeah, it's it's really tough. It's really hard. We still have 16 kilometers to go. We already climbed 400 meters. Yeah, it's uh, really uh, really exciting to see what what will happen because uh, we have a little bit status quo now with the, with this front group. Um, um, yeah, staying together. Uh, riders getting dropped uh, every uh, every couple of meters. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm curious to see which rider will uh, will open. Uh, open up and uh, yeah kicks in the final yeah yeah we talked a lot about it of course uh, it's just waiting for that first attack or maybe waiting for that first gc contestant to drop what do you think if one rider is going to drop out of the top five who do you think it will be oh that's a, re a really difficult one but i think um for me the the rider who i know uh, the less from is Paul Wright, so I think he will be uh, the one who could get dropped out of the top five. But on the other hand, uh, if I have to believe Mason Holyman, he's a really strong uh, rider and can do everything if he has good legs. So uh, yeah, uh, probably it's um, um, yeah it's it's going to be uh, him to to drop out of the top five. But on the other hand, uh, it could also very well be uh, someone else where. Uh, the one that we uh, we don't expect look at that marco frigo had uh, something over his uh, back there and now it's gone away someone was running into the house i don't know maybe it has to do with the ventilation problem maybe he's getting a new one there i'm not sure about that but marco frigo is the rider who's sweating the most so maybe that's the that's my pick then but uh, yeah of course they are all in that group they are all doing a great job at the moment it's still a long way to go 15 kilometers of climbing we just did 17 minutes of racing and it's uh, it's oh so hard, eh? Oh, and I can see that uh, that the riders from Zeppi aren't going to be dropped. Uh, if the comment section has to say it, then uh, they are not going to get dropped. They're going to win the race, they say. So, uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. I'm actually very curious about it. As uh, Marco Frigo is having difficulties at the back of the peloton, 17th position now for the Italian rider. Uh, yeah, he needs to watch out there. As uh, Sindra Coolset is also a little bit behind. It doesn't look like too much of a problem. But uh, as I said, it's a really hard race. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, in all of a sudden, a GC rider can get dropped. That is really possible. So uh, we will uh, keep that in mind. And we'll try to uh, watch that as closely as possible. As we can see, uh, Timon Adersman here. He is a pure climber. Eh? Uh, yeah, Timon is, is, uh, is a guy who uh, was second in the Tour de l'Avenir of 2018. Uh, behind uh, Tadej Pogacar, who's of course... Uh, was third in the 
la vuelta de españa last year so um, yeah maybe that says a lot of uh, of um, yeah what he's capable of last season it was uh, pretty um, um, was pretty uh, he was pretty unlucky with uh, with a lot of um, uh, bad luck um, but uh, yeah he of course is, is, is a is a good climber can also do a very nice individual time trial so uh, I think he will be up there uh, for uh, for this race yeah we'll find out as we are with uh, 16 riders around that in the peloton Johannes Banzer is still there the German rider the individual rider from Germany we can see uh, Janni Speter from the Raadnet Roos team as well Tom Kousens is there he is uh, still in the GC as well in 23rd position so maybe he is a contestant as well to uh, move up some places if he like to Nick McKibben is at the front of the peloton so no more SEG E-Racing Academy at the front of the peloton two riders who are taking a little advantage there Idar Magnus Koolset and uh, Nick McKibben at the front of the race taking a few meters of time yeah it does and um, yeah we have to uh, have to see what uh, what will uh, will happen with this attack and uh, yeah uh, hopefully it uh, it uh, it promises uh, to be um, uh, yeah a nice uh, nice finale because uh, uh, yeah uh, it would be uh, after yesterday's stage and also the first stage was really attractive to see so uh, yeah uh, let's hope that um, um, this is uh, uh, yeah, uh, will also be attractive uh, finale. Yeah, yeah, they are really being uh, real back in there. It was Harrison Wood at the front of the peloton. As uh, we have an interview coming up, I think. Uh, yeah, James Vickers uh, joined the Zoom call. James, can you unmute yourself? James is uh, someone from uh, RGT. Hello, James. Hey, Casper. Hey, Yuri. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Thanks I'm right fine, there. and you're fine as well. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Not too bad at all. Yeah. So uh, what do you think about the RGT platform? Of course, you created it. Can you tell us something uh, about it? Why did you uh, choose to go for this kind of platform, etc., etc.? Well, I didn't create it, um, but I'm fortunate enough to work with um, our founder, Alex Serban. Um, it's his, uh, I guess you call it his love child. Uh, I think he wanted <laughs> to, to do something that had realism and uh, quality training and uh, and some, some something immersive, and RGT was the outcome of that. You know what the guys are racing on today is uh, is what he had to produce. Yeah, but there are already a lot of platforms as well, like uh, Swift and Ralvi. What makes the big difference uh, here? I think uh, th there's two things. Um, obviously, the the realism is a, a big part of what we're striving towards. So, we we want a platform that that recreates racing in the real world as far as is possible. And we hope to continue our developments in that area to produce something that is, uh, is on, you know, is, is unparalleled that nothing compares to. But the second part of, um, of what we do is our business model or, or at least our, our free to use, free to play uh, ethos. And, you know, the main reason I joined the business is because our CEO is, um, quite inspirational and he believes that cycling should be as accessible in the virtual world as it is in the real world and therefore some portion of it should always be free so you know the guys today don't have to pay to to join the the uh, the SCG racing yeah that's and, a nice thing and what sorry what um uh, what are your own uh, personal um uh, thoughts about cycling why do you love this sport and, and why did you want it to be in uh, part of this virtual uh, cycling world I, I guess, um, like many people probably my age, I'm a, I'm a failed athlete, um, raced a bit of cyclocross, um, national championships a few times, not national champion, national championships a few times. Uh, my dad uh, was a, is a mountain bike instructor still in his, um, his mid-60s, um, so cycling really runs through the, the blood of our family. And um, yeah, I think joining, joining the industry, joining RGT is just like a... a helping me realize a lifelong dream of working with athletes, working in the sport, being part of something that's innovative, leading edge. You know, I, I love what we do. I think it's incredible. And I'm a bit of a gamer as well. So the, the, <laughs> cross, between, the cross between cycling and gaming is such a fantastic place to be. It's, it's an amazing place to work. Yeah, that's true. So uh, currently we're watching the SCG uh, e-racing series. I think you're watching the race as well, aren't you? 
Yeah, so I've got an iPad just down to the right hand side with the volume switched down, and that's why I keep looking <laughs> down and see how Mason's doing. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, he, <laughs> um, I, he's my uh, he's my hot pick, I think. Um, he did an amazing job with the the test race, the test event on um, on two first time round. It was it was phenomenal to watch. Um, and I have a, a personal connection with the guys from Holdsworth Zappies as well. So I used to work for Holdsworth the brand, and uh, I know Flavio really well. He's a, he's a he's an incredible guy. Uh, loads of fun. Uh, typically Italian old school training methodologies, and um, yeah, hopefully Mason or someone from Zappies. Or SCG obviously can can ride away with it today. And what are expectations for the for the future of this platform? Can it be as big as uh, Swift? Is that the goal, or maybe something bigger as well? I think you know the 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 can we be as big as Swift? Question is um, it's, I don't I don't really know how to answer that. I think I, that there's so much more potential to come from um, a virtual cycling platform, whether it be. Immersive, more immersive training products, whether it be a better esports product, more accessibility. There's so much that can still be done, um, and there's certainly there's certainly place for more than one product. It's not it's not either or. Um, the future for RGT, I think, is really bright. We we have some amazing brand partnerships um, on the horizon, which we'll be announcing soon, uh, and that that kind of boils back down to what we we want to do as a business. We want to we want to enable the industry. We want to enable cyclists to produce their own experiences, their own events, their own you know do what they want to do on the platform. It's an it's an empowering product. And I think if if we were um, to to rival Zwift in 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 an area, it would be in that area. It would be that you know as a as a as a organization, SEG could could produce this event with without us. You know, we want to work with you guys or work with SEG because they've done an amazing job, but they could have done it without us. That the platform exists to use for everybody to produce this sort of event in a way that suits them at a time that suits them. You know, there's no time slot that they need to find to fit it in or anything like that. Okay, I understand. So uh, final final question, just to make sure Mason Holyman is your pick for today. Yeah? Also for the GC or just for the stage only? Yeah, for the, for the, the pick for the stage, the pick for the GC. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've heard some stories about Mason, and um, he's he's a raw talent. So, yeah, he's my pick for the day. Okay, well, thanks a lot uh, for uh, tuning in, for giving uh, for giving this interview, and uh, yeah, good luck on the program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thanks. Thanks, Casper. Thanks, Yuri. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, and thanks to all the guys, all the teams, everybody that's um, endured some of our early problems. It's been it's been great to to be part of the part of the ride. Okay, well, yeah, thanks thank a lot. Thank you for for a lot of the action, uh, James. Thanks, guys. So we are currently watching uh, Nick McKibben, uh, Yuri. He is at front of the pack. He is at the front a lot, actually, as we just started the foot at the foot of the climb from the Mont Ventoux. So we just started the real climb. It's no more flat now. It's 11.2 kilometers to go. And then we know who is going to win this uh, first SEG e-racing under 23 uh, series, this stage race. Uh, who's your pick for today, uh, Yuri? Because I want to know it from you as well. Um, well, uh, I could play it on safe and go for Mason Holyman or Tymon Adensman, but I am always looking for some sort of a uh, dark horse. That's that's what I like to do. So uh, I will play the cards of Andrew Bidwell today. Andrew Bidwell, okay. And then the GC, oh, also Andrew Bidwell, or uh... no, 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 no. He, he he's uh, he's uh, I think he's 20 minutes behind, so that <laughs> would be the be the case because he missed the start yesterday. Um, and for the GC, well, I think I will go for um, Time man. Okay, okay. Then I'm going for Paul Wright. Just all in on Paul Wright. I can see Eduardo Manfre also in the comment section. He is uh, cheering on Marco Frigo. We all have our own favorites, of course, which is uh, nice about this sports. The battle between SEG and Holdsworth Zeppi is still going on. For the ones who haven't watched yesterday's race or the ones who don't know the exact general classification, I'm going to uh, say it to you one more time. Paul Wright is in front. Then we have three riders at six seconds. That's uh, Harrison Wood, Tymon Anesman and Marco Frigo, the rider who you are watching now at the right bottom of your screen. And we have Mason Holliman, 16 seconds behind uh, Paul Wright. He is from Holdsworth Zeppi team. The sixth rider in the classification is Cinder Coolstead, but he is 51 seconds behind, so I don't think he makes it. Well, but uh, it, it, 
still very uh, well could be the case because there uh, can be uh, created a lot of time gaps on this uh, mythical Morvan too. So if uh, Sindra has a good day, maybe then he can uh, can create a gap for uh, from over a minute or uh, for over uh, 50 seconds to a minute, and that would be enough to uh, to secure the overall win. So I um, yeah I don't want to. Um, uh, <laughs> I, when I'm saying this, I have got a message from Vegar Cool Set. I think it's the father of, uh, yeah, the two oldest Christian Sindra, both with the Uno X Pro team. So uh, very nice. Um, uh, I do think that he uh, still can be in the game. So um, if he gets a gap from uh, from over 50 seconds, yeah, why not? Can he win this GC? Yeah, of course, that's true. Uh, most of the people think like when you're a minute behind, you have to go from really, really far out. But if you ride like two kilometers for, uh, if you if you have a really good final few kilometers in your legs as well, then you can really gain time fast. So uh, yeah, you don't have to uh, worry about that too much. I think with a late attack, since the cool set's also able when uh, the other competitors are all done, are all exhausted, then he can win the GC, but the chances are quite rare but uh, i would love a surprise actually today so if he does it i'll uh, i'll applaud him very loudly there as we can see that uh, dan hole is at the front so yesterday he uh, got dropped he didn't do uh, a good job but uh, today he's trying to uh, to uh, yeah to forget about yesterday and uh, to uh, to win the stage maybe or to help his teammates as much as possible paul wright in his uh, purple leader jersey there in 13th position he's the last rider of the group so uh, yeah it's like a real mountain stage yeah there are only 13 riders left and one by one they're all getting dropped and we're trying to uh, find that first attack here up the molva 2 as there are 10 kilometers to go yeah really looking forward to to all of the action and it seems like that paul is is having uh, quite a difficult time at the moment uh, I think uh, he will uh, drop uh, this group uh, sooner than later. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, um, he's going to be distanced in just a few minutes because I don't see him um, yeah, uh, keeping in this, this group for the next 10 kilometers if he is uh, in these difficulties already uh, at this point. Well, I'm not going to say that, uh, Juli, because yesterday we watched Jordi Meos in his pink jersey. He was the leader from yesterday and he got dropped like four or five times and constantly was able to get back. So maybe that leader's jersey gives you wings. As we see an attack up front, it's Mason Holliman who's trying to uh, get away from the peloton. And this is a prom promising attack. I must say, Dan Hode is trying to follow him. Marco Frigo in third position. But uh, Mason Holliman is trying to put the GC to his hand or however you want to say that. In English, he is up front now, an almost virtual leader as Paul Wright is uh, having really much difficulties there at the back of the peloton. He's being dropped, uh, Yuri. You said it correctly, Paul Wright being dropped. So virtual leader now is uh, Marco Frigo or maybe even Mason Holliman because he is in first position, per first position at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, Mason uh, is uh, uh, opening the final right now. And if it is possible, he uh, this could... Uh, even be a decisive move because he uh, distanced a lot of riders uh, uh, already so uh, yeah they still have to get back to him and uh, uh, we are watching him uh, right now on the screen and it looks like uh, he still has got something left in the tank because he's still uh, cruising pretty uh, pretty smoothly if we watch uh, this uh, camera view of him yeah he knows how to pace himself he knows what kind of upper kilo he needs to ride to keep up the pace it's 6.5 upper kilo if he can keep that up it would be really impressive his heart rate is 187 so don't miss out on that that's a lot but he is there i can see a lot of wind there in his room as well which is good i think so no ventilation problems for a mason Holyman as he is in first position but uh, paul right he's being dropped how is that possible yeah, I think uh, he uh, isn't uh, the the great climber, uh, not the best climber of the five uh, uh, in the top of the GC. Because uh, I did watch uh, uh, I did uh, look up to his results in the past, and he didn't do very well in uh, in the uh, uh, climbing races. Uh, but his move yesterday was quite impressive. So maybe this was some sort of a hidden jam. Uh, you know what I mean, and then um, all of a sudden he would uh, would have been up here. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately for him, he has uh, quite a difficult time at this moment, and uh, and is dropped. And I don't think we will see him again in front of the race. Yeah, I've watched. Uh, 
I'm watching uh, Paul Wright at the moment. Now we're back to Marco Frigo because Paul Wright, I think it's all over for him. He's not riding the wattages as we can see here. Daan Hole is leading the pack. This is maybe a little advantage for the rest of the riders. You can see that Tymon Adersman at the moment is saving around 20 watts there. So yeah, maybe a little bit there for uh, Tymon to rest. Now he's attacking 7 watt per kilogram. He's riding faster than Mason Holliman. But I have to say, once you're up front in an e-race... It's really easy to control the race because you can just see what the riders are uh, putting out of, of kind of what's. So the only thing Mason Holliman has to do at the moment is look at that left side of this screen app. Look at how many watts they are, uh, are uh, putting out there behind. And he needs to do more of than that or uh, maybe uh, equal to that. Uh, the question in the comments, which side of the Molvan 2 are we riding from? It's the Malosen side. So that's uh, how they call it. The Malosen side, so not Beidois. Not salt, it's the Mola Sand side. As we have uh, a chasing group of free riders, Sintra Cool set also there. He is 51 seconds behind in the GC. He's going to uh, make up some time, I think. So, uh, well done by him, Harrison Wood, trying to bridge back to that chasing group. As we have Andrew Bitwell and Marco Frigo also in that group. So, I think we can call it six riders there, the chasing group. Six riders who are trying to uh, get back to Mason Holliman, who is still riding at 6.4 watts per kilogram. Yeah, and uh, it seems like the uh, the chasing group is uh, going to be uh, six riders now, and uh, yeah, maybe they can do some uh, some serious work to uh, to get Mason Holyman back because uh, um, yeah, that's uh, they have to do that because else would uh, the um, Mason will uh, will go and win this uh, stage and also win the win the GC and then we uh, can call him uh, Mason Hollywood again. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood, it's his new nickname, ladies and gentlemen. Mason Holliman is up here for something. He's also uh, 19 years old, actually. Yeah, he's born in the same month as uh, Harrison Wood. He is uh, only, uh, how is it? I need to calculate that. 11, 11 days uh, younger than Harrison Wood. So they are almost from the same age. And they are almost from the same level as well, I have to say. Because look at that watt per kilogram. It's almost the same for the two riders. Uh, Harrison Wood was leading the pack for a little moment. Now Dan Hole is uh, leading the pack, trying to do as much as possible for his teammates. But he needs to watch out uh, as well because he is, uh, he is dropping Tymon Adersman and co. there at the climb of the Molvan 2. 7.8 kilometers remaining, a little flatter section there as the riders are saving around 50 watts. Maybe with a good jump they can get Mason Holliman back. I don't think the gap is uh, more than 10 seconds at the moment. So that means Marco Frigo is our virtual leader at the moment. But I need a stopwatch for that. So trying to uh, to uh, to do that as fast as possible. Maybe you can do that, uh, Yuri. Yeah, oh, I can try try to do that. But, yeah, but I have a small delay. Yeah, so yeah, maybe the, the, that's not very uh, accurate. The time is there up front. So there's a little bush now. And it was at 36.35 once we're past there. And it's now at... 36, 47, 48. So it's uh, around 12 or 13 seconds, the advantage of Mason Holyman. So that means he is virtual leader at the moment, but it's not a lot. It's only two seconds. This is maybe going to be a game of seconds here. That would be really cool. Eh? That would be really cool, but we still have uh, uh, more than 7K to go. So uh, anything can happen. And there also can, uh, can be the riders who uh, will get dropped or who get caught back and uh, but also there you can also still gain uh 30 or 40 seconds if uh, if you ride pretty hard yeah and i now see that the uh, time and adamsman is trying to bridge the gap with mason hollywood exactly he's on his way mason so try to get an accelerate and don't let him uh, get you yeah exactly i was talking about that but per kilogram you only have to see what the other rider does and exactly do the same but uh, Tymon maybe has the fresher legs here. He was able to put out 7 watt per kilogram at that uh, steeper slope. And now getting back to Mason Holliman, which makes him the virtual leader of the SCG e-racing stage race here. The third stage up to Morvantu. Yesterday, Paul Wright was the winner. He was riding in that purple leader's jersey, but he is left behind. As Sinder Coolset is trying to bridge the gap. To Tymon Adersman, he is back, ladies and gentlemen. Two leaders at the moment. And uh, it, actually, it are three leaders, I must say, because Sinder the Cool Set also joined Mason Holliman a few more meters. And then we can say it for sure. So the gap was 13 seconds. And uh, within a few minutes, 
it's uh, completely gone now. Mason Holloman can start over again in his uh, attempt to uh, pick up the leader's jersey and the, the win here in the GC from the, the in the Monfa 2 stage. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool to see that we have now uh, three leaders. Uh, I think uh, Timon and, uh, and Sindre will have to catch their breath a little bit, so maybe Mason can uh, can take a little bit of an advantage of that in the steeper part, which is uh, yet to come. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool that we are up here with three riders, and also Marco Frigo and Andrew Bidwell not very far behind. Yeah, this could be a mental game as well, eh? when you're up there up front thinking about that uh, stage victory and the GC win, and all of a sudden, Time and Abisman is back in your view. I don't think that does uh, any good to your mental, uh, to your yeah, to your mentality. As we see, uh, Time and Abisman at the right bottom of the screen. He must be happy that he is back in that first group. But it is not over. Also, the group behind is uh, getting back, is getting closer and closer. Maybe Time and Abisman doesn't have to do anything at the moment since uh, since uh, Marco Frigo is uh, back there in that uh, second group, that chasing group. He is also good there in the general classification he is actually uh, going to win the general classification if he finishes in the same time as the winner of today as long as is as uh, paul wright is still behind of course so we have three leaders time and asman is virtual leader but now andrew bitwell your favorite for today is uh, joining the first group yeah pretty amazing to see now we got four uh, four uh, leaders uh, and uh, yeah, a pretty impressive ride of Andrew Bidmull and also Harrison Wood isn't far behind. So, uh, and exactly there he is. And also Marco Frigo is returning to uh, the front group. So uh, yeah, pretty exciting race here and um, very nice to see which of these six riders uh, is the best. If the, maybe Mason Hollyman, uh, Hollyman uh, did, uh, yeah, shoot it, uh, his uh, cartouches off uh, already, but maybe he has one left in the tank and uh, also uh, one of the other riders who uh, came back to him uh, uh, maybe they have uh, haven't uh, shown themselves uh, to the maximum. So um, yeah, um, pretty exciting to see uh, what this uh, last few kilometers will bring us. Yeah, I'm excited as well. You're watching Marco Frigo. He knows what he's up for. He is the virtual leader at the moment as it stands. But it's oh so long to go. They are all almost in the same time actually. So there's of course a big chance that the winner of the stage will also be the winner of the GC as long as it is, as it is uh, Harrison Wood, Tijmen Aresman, Marco Frigo or Mason Holliman. But uh, yeah, very nice to see that there is someone from New Zealand also in that uh, first group. He's some sort of substituting uh, Paul right there. Andrew mm -hmm. Bitwell, he is there in the first group eh, instead of Paul. Yeah, uh, New Zealand has uh, a couple of young, very uh, talented riders. Andrew Bitwell is one of them. Uh, you also got, uh, of course, Corbin Strong of the SEG team and Finn Fisher Black, the, who was a double national champion from the Jumbo Visma development squad. So they have, uh, and they also have uh, still a lot of uh, uh, other good, young, big talents uh, coming up. But the, those three, uh, in my uh, point of view, are the three big ones who are, uh, yeah, um, coming. Uh, coming uh, to this level and uh, hopefully um, he can uh, do some justice to uh, to Paul Wright who was uh, of course in the leader's jersey and uh, yeah uh, keep the Kiwis up there yeah that's cool of course uh, from Andrew Bitwell from team Skoda Fruzio he's not competing for the GC but he is of course competing for the stage race five kilometers to go we've climbed 1218 meters so far we did two races before this one so the fatigue must really uh, kick in now for the riders as Marco Frigo is uh, once again uh, having some troubles to keep up with the group but uh, I think he manages to uh, stay there as well as we see an attack from uh, Andrew Bitwell attack from Andrew Bitwell there up front he knows that he is not competing for the GC so maybe they are letting him go he's testing the rest of the riders Harrison Wood going to the front of that uh, chasing group there together with Marco Frigo but it's Andrew Bitwell who's putting out the most of the wattages at the moment so Andrew Bitwell has 20 meters on the concurrentia Marco Frigo now trying to bridge back to that uh, New Zealand rider with Mason Holliman in third position at the moment. Sindra Koolset in fourth position. And then we have uh, Tymon Aresman as well there. They are saving around 50 watts. It's not a really steep slope where Andrew Bitwell is trying to attack. Maybe he didn't notice that. But uh, the other riders are managing to save a few more watts there in the wheel. Tymon Aresman is really saving his energy. And maybe he is the one with the final attack at the last, uh, at the last very bit of the stage. Uh, that could very well be the case. Uh, Timon is a very smart and clever guy. 
So uh, yeah, maybe if he uh, understands how uh, how this game works, uh, he will be uh, yeah up there for uh, for one final kick in the last few uh, hundred meters. But um, yeah, um, he is saving some energy, and then all of the other guys are uh, yeah are trying to. Uh, to bridge the gap with uh, with Andrew Bidwell, who is still in front, but uh, Timon uh, <laughs> doesn't uh, listen to me very well because he's now in the front of the of the chasing group. Yeah, he's in the front of the chasing group, but he's putting out 5.3 watts per kilogram, which is of course a lot, but it's not something uh, called an attack. So yeah, now he's uh, going back to that chasing group. I think Andrew Bidwell knows his attack is over. It was a good move, of course, but patience is also very important in this race. Four kilometers, it's here. To, uh, yeah, it's from here to the machine, maybe your uh, your grandmother or something who's living near you. It's not a lot, I wanted to say that, but uh, on a move and two climb, such as this one with a steep hill, steep, a steep mountain, is of course very much yeah, for kilometers. Yeah, if I have to do that for kilometers, maybe I'll be uh, up there for two hours, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, I will do it a little bit quicker than that, but uh, yeah, it's still a long way to go, and then all these riders know that. Um, so uh, yeah, um, it's it's not that we're home in, in in ten minutes or so. I think. No, we're not home in ten minutes. You're saying it correctly. Uh, as we are watching uh, Sindra cool set now on top of the on top of the table at the moment in first position, taking a little advantage there on his uh, other riders. It's very cool to see once again we have an international field there at the front of the race. So it's uh, someone from Norway. It's uh, two people from Great Britain. We have. Someone from New Zealand, someone from Italy, and someone from uh, the Netherlands. Yeah, nice to see that it's such an international field. Yeah, really nice to see because uh, um, also not uh, not everybody from the same team is up uh, up front, so we really have a battle here. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, SEG has uh, the um, advantage that they have uh, some cards to play. But I think in the end, uh, Timon will be the uh, will be the guy who has to do it for them. Uh, and I think that uh, Sindra Coolset and uh, Mason Hollyman and also Andrew Bitt will know that. But on the other hand, maybe Harrison Wood, who is, like you said, really good in uh, these type of races, uh, can be the um, yeah some sort of uh, uh, yeah we call it uh, a clown out of the box here in the in, or the devil <laughs> out of a box in the in the Netherlands. I don't know if, if anybody in the rest of the world understands what I'm saying now. But uh, yeah, maybe he can be uh, the one who snitches the, the victory. So um, yeah, that will be uh, uh, the case, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for that uh, final attack where you think of so some some sort of attack what uh, Paul Wright did yesterday, an attack where your mouth uh, comes uh, open. I don't know how you say that in uh, in uh, in English, but Cinder <laughs> Cool set is actually taking a big advantage there on the peloton, almost 100 meters. Are they in a little hesitation at the moment, or are they just not capable of reacting? If it is the second case, then uh, Sindra is really, really up here for something. Three kilometers to go, so he has time to gain some more time as well. I'm not. Uh, do you think he's thinking about the general classification at the moment? It's 51 seconds, eh, what he's behind. Yeah, yeah, and um, it it could very well be the case that he is uh, he is going to try uh, to take both both the stage win and the GC, but uh, still uh, a long way to go for him. But uh, it looks uh, really impressive what he's doing uh, at this uh, at this very moment. Yeah, Sindra cool set on that very first stage, the Borrego Spring stage. He did last Thursday. He uh, finished in uh, how do you say that? Let's see, 39th position. Uh, 47 seconds behind the winner Jordi Mills. If he didn't do that, then he would be the virtual leader for now. So maybe he feels uh, stupid about that. But uh, that makes it more interesting as well. Because uh, now at the moment, the virtual leader is Marco Frigo. And they start to uh, look at each other maybe in that uh, chasing group. Let's see here. Harrison Wood is taking the lead as uh, Timon Aresman moves up to second position. They are making a train and they are trying to uh, make use of each other. Because uh, you can of course save energy here in the draft. As uh, Timon Aresman is taking the lead at the moment. 100 meters for uh, Sindra Koolstedt. That's his advantage. So uh, maybe he's up here for the stage win as we are getting really close there to the top of the move on two. Yeah, uh, quite an impressive move, and uh, yeah, I'm really wondering who of the who of the guys who are following him uh, can bridge that gap. Uh, I think uh, Timon is trying it uh, to do it right now, uh, with also Mason following and uh, and also uh, Marco Frigo, Harrison Wood, and um, and Andrew Bidwell still up there. 
But uh, yeah, it, it seems like uh, Cinder Coolset is doing a great move. He uh, is actually one of four brothers, I understand, from uh, Fager Coolset. I don't know if it is their father or not, but he told me they are uh, are with four. The oldest two, Christian and Sindre, we see here, uh, are both with the UNOX uh, Pro Team. And the youngest uh, of the four brothers is still an uh, under-17 rider. And uh, the third brother is Magnus, who is uh, riding for the Dare Bikes development team, who actually was third on this stage in the test race of this month and two. Yeah. Magnus is also uh, a very good rider. He's uh, currently in ninth position, but we are watching Tijmen Aresman. He's really shaking up the field at the moment. He is uh, getting closer and closer to Sindra Coolset, Mason Hollyman in third position. Marco Frigo trying to bridge back to that uh, rider from uh, Zeppi Holtzworth Racing Team. So uh, yeah. So SCG E-Racing Academy in a good position at the moment for the GC because uh, Harrison Wood is also in that group. Andrew Bitwell having some difficulties uh, at the moment, but uh, I think he can be happy with his uh, performance so far. He did a good attack, so uh, he must be happy with that. Timon Aasman is the rider who is trying to bridge back to Sindra Coolset. They are with the six. You can see them all here in this uh, view. And uh, they are all separate, so it's a very big finale here. 1.8 kilometers to go. And uh, you really start pacing yourself now because uh, there's no time of hesitation at the moment. Now it all comes down to uh, sheer willpower to, uh, yeah, if you really want it, then you can get it, I think. Huh? Yeah, of course, uh, the, you, there, aren't any, uh, there isn't any time left to save energy. You have to, uh, everything what you got, you have to put it down on the roads now or the virtual roads. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's now very well the case. And I think Tymon Adensman is going to bridge the gap with Sindra Coolset. Um, but uh, yeah, um, then we still have to see if, uh, if Tymon is capable of getting rid of uh, the Norwegian climber. So uh, yeah, uh, still a pretty uh, exciting uh, 1.5 kilometers to go. And let's see what, uh, what this uh, Grande Finale will bring us. Yeah, you can see the tower up there. It's not long to go. We are with four riders. Attack from Mason Holliman now. Mason Holliman trying to go for it. And Tymon Aresman is uh, noticing that. So, uh, yeah, we're really in the big finale at the moment. 1.5 kilometers. And then we know who the winner is of this stage race. We also know the winner of the stage. Then Marco Frigo is also trying to bridge back as I am losing contact with the front of the race. Oh, 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 here we are back again. So in first position, it's Mason Holliman. But look at that, uh, at, look at the gap. It's not really big. Eh? Marco Frigo is almost back in the wheel. And we have uh, Tymon Adersman in third position. So Mason Holliman may win the stage if he keeps on doing this. But he needs to go keep uh, the pace up. He needs to go harder if he really wants to win the whole thing. If he also wants to win the GC. Since he's 10 seconds behind Marco Frigo and uh, Tijmen Adersman. That's the battle we're up here. It's uh, three riders all separately but also very close together there. 1.2 kilometers to go. Oh, 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 Yuri. This is getting really exciting. We're almost there. Yes, it is. Uh, this, uh, yeah, very good riders. Um, uh, Mason Holliman was uh, 20th in the Baby Giro last year. As a first year, it's really good result. Marco Frigo, of course, is the Italian champion on the road. Uh, was fifth in the Giro di Ljubljana, which is a junior race in 2018, won by Remco Evenepoel. We all uh, all know him, of course. And uh, there also uh, there's also uh, Timon Adelsman, which I already said was second behind Tadej Pogacar in uh, the Tour de l'Avenir of 2018. So all these three guys can climb very, very well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a one exciting finish and we still have 900 meters to go. Yeah, 800 one. meters to go, 700 meters to go. Marco Frigo bridged back to Mason Holliman. Marco Frigo is uh, putting out 8.8 watt per kilogram here as we have 700 meters to go. Marco Frigo is distancing everyone. Time and Aasman, they're still in third position, but it looks like it's going to be the day for the Italian rider. Oh, 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 he is in first position at the moment and he needs to give his all. Mason Holliman in second position, 32 meters behind as we have 600 meters to go at the moment. Marco Frigo is in first position. Who is going to get it? That is the big question. Look at him there at the right bottom of the screen. He's really in a big pain at the moment. He knows what he's doing. 400 meters. We are almost 53 minutes in the saddle at the moment here on the Mont Ventoux. And I think Marco wow. Frigo is really also... Italian, uh, Grinta. 
Yeah, he's also going to uh, take the GC, of course, if he's winning the stage. So uh, he is uh, going for a double here. We can see the tower and we can see the finish. There's no arch, but we don't need it. I think uh, it's pretty clear, uh, Yuri. Marco Frigo is here in first position. And he's not only going to take the stage win, he's also going to take the win in the general classification. 5.6 watt per kilogram. It's a very high heart rate, but he's almost there. 200 meters still to go. 100 meters. It's there uh, above there with that flaw turn and then he's done Marco Frigo is the winner of the SEG e-racing stage race Mason Holliman comes in second and then uh, Tymon Aresman is uh, the third rider and he will take I think he will take the second place in the general classification before uh, Mason Holliman as well wow what a, what a finale eh? yeah what an extraordinary race here up to the Mont Ventoux very exciting uh, until the last few meters and that was uh, yeah a pretty pretty impressive uh, last kilometer of uh, uh, italian champion marco Ch uh, frigo with a real italian green tar on his face i really like to see that and uh, also great battle of mason hollywood who tried everything uh, he was capable of of uh, keeping off those uh, seg riders but marco frigo was uh, was uh, actually the best one uh, with also time and Arisman doing a great job but uh, yeah, has to uh, has to be satisfied with his third place. Yes, sixth place for Andrew Bidwell. Fifth place was for Harrison Wood, and the fourth place was for Findre. Cool set as uh, Dan Hone. Oh, we, we missed out on Morten Wolgaard. He is uh, in seven. He finished in seventh position. Dan Holen is uh, the number eight of this stage. Then we have uh, Magnus Cool set coming in over the line in ninth position, and Janis Peter is going to finish the top ten for today he is uh, our number 10 of the stage the gc i don't know uh, yuri what is going to happen for the rest i know that marco frigo has won the gc time and Aresman probably second and uh, mason hollyman he will be uh, at least third but uh, yeah the rest is all spread out so i don't have a clue as we see joris haaks and uh, nick mckibben also climbing there just uh, after the top 10 in 11th and 12th position yeah i don't know if we uh, already have the time to do a short interview with the the winner Marco Frigo but uh, if he's ready take your time Marco and then uh, when you're ready please yeah, unmute ready. yourself he's already waving at us so I think uh, he's almost ready yeah can you hear me yeah I can hear you so Marco yeah. congratulations what a race thank you thank you it's been a difficult race, but I, I tried to keep my pace in the first part and in the second part just follow the other guys and I forgot guys in the last two days. Then this is my tactics and uh, yeah, luckily it works. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing to see. You also had an, uh, an assistant, eh, I think. There was someone putting uh, something on your back all the time. What was that yeah, exactly? Yeah, we know that the cooling part of the, of especially when you are in the rollers, is uh, really important. So I had the help by my little brother that uh, put me some uh, wet towel in the back and uh, with the with the fan uh, in front of me and the towels, it uh, it really helped me stay fresh. Yeah, I understand. Julie, do you have a question or? Uh... Yeah, I'm back. I'm back again. Uh, I oh. don't know what you asked him because I was uh, was a few minutes down because uh, my Zoom uh, uh, had some problems. But uh, yeah, I, I was really surprised uh, Marco uh, winning this stage, and I was wondering if he uh, uh, maybe you already asked this question. But if not, then I'm uh, if if I do, it's the second time. But Marco, did you did you ex expect it to do this well? Because I know you are a good climber, but I didn't know you were a really good climber, like uh, doing uh, battling here with uh, with Mason Holyman and Timon Adamsman. Yeah, yeah, it was the I think the main stage of this uh, stage race. So the main focus was uh, uh, about today. So uh, yesterday and the day before, I just tried to, nice. to save energy for for these stages, and uh, nothing. I. I know I, I am good climber. I also also lightweight, but I can uh, 
especially in a long time, some good power output. So he was a, a sure a great place. Yeah. Yeah. This this promises a lot for the for the road re, uh, road season yet to come, Marco. Yeah, for sure. The next race is in uh, in August. Uh, we we have to prepare it well, prepare them well. So st stay focused and uh, be motivated for for a short but uh, I think pretty, pretty intensive season. And uh, yeah, keep focus on the. On the, on the trainings, yeah. Yeah, thanks but a lot, uh, Marco. Oh, do you have one more question, Yuri, or? Uh... Yeah, f f first a little party, of course. A little bit of Lambrusco tonight, Marco. <laughs> I don't know if I, <laughs> maybe Prosecco is best. <laughs> uh, do you have Prosecco uh, now? Because then we can do a little award ceremony, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. Here in Italy, especially in the north part of the Italy, there is always a bottle of Prosecco in the fridge, so. <laughs> ah, okay, nice. But uh, we're going to go to, uh, thank you, uh, Marco. We're going to go to uh, Mason Holliman because he's uh, waiting for us. I don't know if you have time now, uh, Mason, to do it. Hello. Hello. So yes. you're, oh, 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 no. Ah, there you oh, are again. Back. Yep. Hello, uh, Mason. So you were very, very competitive uh, during the stage, but at the end it was uh, only enough for the second place. Are you happy after all, or uh, did you expect more? Um... It, it, it's a hard one. I knew uh, I knew the second boys were they had a seriously strong team today. Um, you know, I think every one of them could have been on the podium really. So I knew I'd probably have my work cut out. Um, but yeah, um, I can only be happy with putting everything on the line, and that wasn't enough today. But it was it's all good fun. Yeah, what was your plan for today? Because you were attacking really early on, eh, already. Already at the foot of the Mont Ventoux, you were going for it. Yes, uh, to be honest, uh, in the test race, I, that probably um, made me a bit naive to how, how how many riders could, you know, bring you back and hold you there because I, I went really early in the, in the test race and that seemed to pay off, but um, I was looking in the back when I was going and you know, I saw the Sega line up behind and, um, yeah, I knew it was going to be seriously hard to stay out front at that point. Yeah, and uh, what do you think about this platform, actually? Does it keep you fit? Uh, how do you look at it? Is it a good way to uh, to stay fit for the races to come? Or uh... Yes, yes, sure. I think it's... Um, I really like how realistic it is, um, you know, compared to the other platforms that are similar. It's, um, it is really maybe more so like the road so yeah it's uh it's, it's great fun to keep the, the race legs there yeah okay do you have a question yuri or uh yeah uh, mason of course uh, you were 20th in the last uh, year of the baby giro um what are your expectations uh, after this race and, and and looking forward to the to the road season yes the um the, the giro is of course uh, a really big goal for me this year um I feel like I've, you know, improved a lot since last year. Um, you know, I've worked a lot on my weaknesses from last year, and I think uh, I hope to be another level at the Giro this year. Um, uh, yeah, I guess just see see how that goes, see how the competition is. Um, I can just try, try my hardest and see where that that leads me. And what were the main weaknesses that you worked hard uh, hard on the most? Um, I, with uh, with living in an area with shorter climbs, I'd say my five to ten minute efforts were really strong last year. Whereas mm -hmm. um, I, I'd never raced up a mountain pass before, so that was an area which I, I'd say I lacked a lot in last year. But n now it seems to uh, be in line with the the other numbers now. So yeah, I'm super happy with that. So uh, we don't uh, only see you here in this virtual uh, road up uh, up front, but we also will see you in the road season uh, in the up in the race. Yes, so <laughs> All right. Yeah. So good luck this season, Mason. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. I uh, do have Cheers. I do have the results for you. We're currently watching it. Uh, Paul Wright. He lost his uh, purple jersey. 
Of course, we uh, know that I am now uh, loading in the results, so we need to take a little more time. Yeah, Yuri, what's your conclusion of this uh, three days of racing? Three different stage winners. I think it was really enjoyable. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, it was really enjoyable because um, yeah, we had uh, what you said three uh, three types of races: one sprint stage, one classic race, and, and one uh, very uh, hard climb, of course. And uh, yeah, it was it was really fun to see that some of the riders uh, who uh, yeah uh, who were up there for uh, for the GC also went all in uh, on yesterday just uh, to make sure they didn't lose any time. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's nice to see that uh, the guys who took that gamble yesterday to to keep in front of the race on the Paterberg. Um, yeah, that it paid off uh, that they also uh, uh, battled for victory here on the Mont Ventoux as well as for the GC. So it's very nice to see that uh, that uh, climate type riders did uh, did survive yesterday. And um, uh, in the real world, maybe that's that's a little bit different, uh, a little bit uh, harder than in this virtual uh, world. But it's very nice to see that uh, that they were capable of doing that. Yeah, there we have the provisional top five, Marco Frigo is the winner of today's race. Mason Holliman came in second position. Tijmen Aadersman was third. Sintra Coolset was fourth. And Harrison Wood finished in fifth position. We do also have the, uh, the GC, but it's only, I think that's only the, the leader. So yeah, nothing really special there. I need to, this is the one from yesterday. I think yeah, this is yesterday, sorry. I'll delete that really quickly. Try to uh, find that out, yeah. So the qualification, Marco Frigo, of course, uh, winning that. Let's see, or I need to uh, find it as quickly as possible, of course. I think it's, uh, think it's in now. Yeah, almost. Here we go. So it's, uh, it's a quick improvisation, of course. I'm getting uh, this sent as quickly as possible. There we go. Marco Frigo in the pink leader's jersey and has to keep it because uh, yeah this was the final stage of it uh, Yuri we're done yeah we're done uh, with this first uh, ever uh, stage race uh, for the U uh, uh, under 23 riders and uh, I think this was very uh, very nice to see because um, yeah uh, we are all uh, in the waiting for the real action on the roads uh, the riders of course but also uh, the spectators and, and, and us as, as commentators and journalists so uh, yeah it was really nice to see all of those uh, guys uh, uh, can battle against each other in uh, in this uh, virtual world so uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm really excited about it yeah i was hoping for marco to have his uh, prosecco ready but it's not the case so uh, i think we're going to <laughs> end it there yuri thanks for uh, joining me for commentary i enjoyed it did you enjoy it as well yeah i enjoyed it a lot uh, our english isn't <laughs> that good but uh, i think we did uh, we did it good enough to uh, to make it understandable for uh, for everyone uh, who was watching and who was listening so hopefully uh, everybody enjoyed uh, just like we did and uh, yeah why not uh, let's see each other uh, for the next race i don't know if there's anything uh, um, yeah uh, yet to come but uh, let's hope it's uh, it's the beginning of something uh, very beautiful yeah, I hope that as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, watching these three days. And I hope to see you back as soon as possible on the SCG E-Racing Academy channel. So make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, just as uh, Marco is saying it. And then uh, we hope to see you back. Thanks to everyone at uh, SCG for making this possible. And uh, as I already told you, see you back soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.